Shalom, brothers and sisters. Today's Thursday thought, I want to talk to you about racism. As a kid, I grew up in a very, very white community, and there were people that thought racism was wrong. There were people that didn't really understand what racism was, and there were some really racist people that I grew up with. I grew up in a very predominantly white Latter-day Saint tradition, and to be quite frank and blunt, it was a very racist tradition. I still remember as a youth sitting in my car and this couple walked by, it was a black man, a white woman, and the person we were with just condemned them for being an interracial couple. And they walked into the church building and then that person just went off talking about how you know, well, she's, she's a member. She should know better. And I'll be honest, at that time, I said, as soon as I turn 18, I'm leaving this church. I don't want to be around these racists. Because even as a kid, I knew the racism was wrong, even though I saw it all around me. And Brigham Young taught, I mean, it's in the journal's discourses. You can't deny it. He said a lot of very racist things that were very of that time. And it's hard for me to say, okay, well, this person was definitely a prophet, see, and revelator if you couldn't see the truth about race. And I know that Joseph Smith originally was okay with, with um, slavery, but eventually he repented of that. And when he was running for president, he wanted to free the slaves. His only concern about interracial marriage was he was worried that society wouldn't treat people correctly. It wasn't that he thought that it was a sin or that God did anything wrong. And, and I can tell you there were people in my youth that would grab a hold of that because it was in teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith and would use that as an excuse for their bigotry. And I would read that and say, this, this isn't what I'm reading. But I want to share some scriptures with you from the Book of Mormon on this topic. Um, one of the things that people like to do is that there are unfortunate people that even believe in the Book of Mormon and think, oh, this is a racist book. It's it's not a racist book, but it's human beings. We unfortunately grab things and make things racist. One of the key things I always like to point out is that there were no Europeans in the Book of Mormon and there were no black Africans in the Book of Mormon. They were all people from the Middle East, which means that they were all brown people. So, you know, there's parts in the Book of Mormon where people don't recognize one another if they're a Lamanite or Nephite except based on the way that they dress. When the Zoramites put some sort of markings on their on their heads, then they were suddenly, you know, that was God's evidence of, of God's curse against them, the same as the curse of the Lamanites. So I want to start off by reading Alma 259 RAV 380 PV. No, no, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Alma 1, 103, RAV, 3, 5, LPV. It says, Now the heads of the Lamanites were shorn, and they were naked, save it were skin, which was girt about their loins, and then also their armor, and their bows, and their arrows. And it's talking about Lamanites going to war. If we skip down a little bit, in verse 104, RAV, verse 6, OPV it says the skins of the Lamanites were dark according to the mark which is set upon their fathers. This is literally the next verse. And when you read these things about the dark skins, then suddenly it becomes clear by this verse that it's not referring to their skin, it's referring to the, the clothing they wore. You can't say the garments because they don't wear traditional garments like they wore when they were living in the Middle East. They're now wearing skins. And so therefore, it's the skins that are dark instead of the garments that are dark. It's just a way of speaking. And if we look in uh, Jacob, the book of Jacob, it says, and this is where it's uh, 259 RAV 38 OPV. Oh, my brother, I fear that unless you shall repent of your sins, that, your, that their skins, the Lamanite skins, will be whiter than yours when you shall be brought with them before the throne of God. And 
And then skipping down a bit in verse 60, uh, REV, verse 9a, OPV, it says, Wherefore, a commandment I give unto you, which is the word of God, that you revile no more against them because of the darkness of their skins. So, how can that be the skin, like this skin, if it, when they go before God, it doesn't make any sense. This is obviously referring to the type of clothing. It's like saying garments. So when we, when in the Book of Mormon, when it talks about Nephites being white, well, they became dark when they sinned and became and, went, and became wicked, right? Uh, same thing with the Lamanites. It's not that their literal skin changed. That is an, a misunderstanding and misinterpretation brought on by American culture. Now, if we are to believe that this book was actually written, you know, by people with a, a Hebrew understanding, then we can look at the Bible and see that when it talks about darkness and skin and garments and things like this, it's referring to our cleanliness or our, our dirtiness, you know, like in Isaiah when it says that though your sins will be, you know, red as blood, it'll be as white as wool. Um, it's all symbolic. In the in the Bible, it makes it very clear that God is not a respecter of persons. God doesn't judge us by our race or by our gender or anything else. He judges by our hearts. Have we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior? There's a lot of people in where I live, the United States, and that's just here, it's all over the world, that want to try to hide the reality of racism. They want to pretend like it didn't exist. And the reality is that it still exists. It hasn't gone away. Has it gotten better? In some ways, yes. In other ways, no, it has not. The only way that we can defeat racism is to number one, actually understand what it is. I still remember, uh, the, I think his name was Bundy, the guy who owed the government a bunch of money and was doing some big protest because he refused to pay them because it was federal land for his raising his sheep or something. I, I don't know the exact story. But man, he said some really super racist stuff about black people being better off slaves. It was just utterly ridiculous. And then when people called him racist, he didn't understand. He's like, no, I'm, I'm not a racist. I love all people. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to look out for the best of these people, and, and that's that's the biggest problem in my mind of racism. The idea of racism we know is wrong, but because we don't really understand what racism is, we still end up being racist. I myself, I am positive that there are things that culturally that I don't understand, and so I hope and pray to God that, that I can overcome anything than me that is any sort of bigotry or bias, but they still exist. And I, I don't excuse them. If someone tells me that something I'm doing is wrong, I look at it and try to correct it. And that is what we need to do as Christians and as Latter-day Saints. We can't look for excuses for the past. We can't look excuses for the present or the future. All we can do is own up to what happened, apologize if we're wrong, and move forward with Christ. We can't love one another and not see color. And I say that because if the color of people's skin is invisible, then that means that the sins against them are invisible too. If we want to truly love one another, we have to lift them up and accept them as they are. And that includes cultural differences, religious differences, and any other differences that exist. Because racism isn't a black and white issue. And I mean that both phys physically, literally, and um, metaphorically, racism is an issue of the heart, where we're unwilling to accept anyone that's different from ourselves. And I know I talk a lot about controversial topics, 
because to me they're not controversial they're life these are the topics that make up who we are and it all boils down to one thing and that is can you accept and love someone that's not like you or do you have to see a certain amount of things that are like yourself in order to accept somebody else and if so what is that amount because I guarantee you it's not 100% it can't be God wants us to be united in diversity not in conformity he doesn't want us segregated he wants us to learn from different cultures that's one of the things I love about America you can complain about Taco Bell all you want how they Americanized Mexican food if you even want to call it Mexican food at this point but it wouldn't exist if it wasn't for that mingling of cultures I don't want to eat bland British food I don't want to eat haggis from my Scottish background I want variety and if we can go out in America and enjoy all this cuisine, why can't we enjoy the other facets of their cultures? That doesn't mean that we need to change them or that we need to Americanize things or whatever country you're in. But it means that we can allow cultural exchange so that we all become better. I know this has gotten kind of long. I'm going to wrap it up here by telling you one of the things I find interesting about archaeology is that when archaeologists go and they explore certain areas, so for example, there's one city in particular, I don't know what it was, a village, whatever you want to call it, and they could always tell when they were at war, when they became isolationist, because their art dwindled, their culture dwindled. Everything just started dwindling. But once they opened their doors again and they had peace, all of a sudden the art exploded, the culture exploded, education exploded. Why? Because they were open to learning. And that's my biggest problem with racism, is that it closes our minds and our hearts and makes us woefully ignorant. So my Thursday thought for you today is, how can we look at ourselves and love a little bit more, hate a little bit less? How can we stand up for those that are oppressed and be honest and admit that there's a problem and it needs to be solved? How can we bring more peace, more cultural learning and more cultural understanding? How can we learn? from those that are different than ourselves. That's my message, my thought for you this Thursday, and I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.